Welcome to my channel Easy English to have glimpses of English language and literature. Hello friends, today we are going to discuss Sir Philip Sidney's sonnet number 31. With how sad states, O moon, thou climbest the skies. I am Srinivas Pawar, Assistant Professor of English from Basar Desai College, Patan, Maharashtra. First, we will see some interesting details about Sir Philip Sidney. Sidney was born in 1554 and died in 1586. He was a major writer in the Elizabethan age which spans from 1558 to 1603 along with some other great literary figures like Edmund Spencer, Christopher Marlowe and William Shakespeare. <coughs> Sidney was a renaissance man as we can see he was a poet, a critic, a courtier and a soldier who can fight on the battlefield. According to one story, lying wounded on the battlefield as he was shot in the thigh, Sidney gave his water to another wounded soldier, saying, Thy necessity is yet greater than mine. Such a kind-hearted person he was. His uh, important works are Astrophel and Stella, The Defense of Poesy, The Countess of Pembroke's Arcadia. The Defense of Poesy, which is also called an Apology for Poetry, is a work of criticism written in 1580s and published after his death in 1595 is believed to be his response to the objections on poets raised by Stephen Gosson's essay The School of Abuse and the Countess of Pembroke's Arcadia which is also called simply as Arcadia is a prose pastoral romance Let us move to his uh, Astrophel and Stella, which is a poetic, ambitious poetic venture. It is uh, composed in uh, 1580s, which contains 108 sonnets and 11 songs. It is the first of the sonnet sequences in English language. The Greek word Aster here signifies star and Phil which is also his name is, is standing for the lover so Astrophel becomes the star lover and the Latin word Stella means star so the star lover and the star in which Astrophel signifies Philip Sidney and Stella is a Penelope devour who was offered to him but uh, Sidney denied her and then later she married to some Lord Robert Rich and became Penelope Rich only to realize the poet that he was in deeply love with her. Coming to the poem, we will read first four lines of the poem and we will try to understand it. With how sad staves, O moon, thou climbest the skies, how silently and with how van a face, what may it be that even in heavenly place that busy archer his sharp arrows tries. From the very first line, which is also the title of the poem, we can see that the poet is addressing something to the moon. O moon, Sidney says, you are climbing up, the sky taking sad steps, the moon is climbing up silently with a face so wan, so pent so pale and dumb just like the poet's one the poet might be trying to identify his mood with that of the moons the unresponsive beloved in case of sydney is making the lover sad silent and pale faced to confirm that is it the same case with the moon poet asks him in heaven also is some archer busy throwing arrows towards the sensitive hearts? In heaven also do the beloveds make their lovers sad, silent and van-faced? This is what Sydney wants to ask to the moon. Here the word archer refers to the mythological Roman god of love who has the habit of piercing his arrows into heavenly bodies. 
Here we can uh, clearly see iambic pentameter brought into the use by Mr. Sidney. Pa pam pa pam pa pam pa pam pa pam. It could be identified it is. That bees the archer his sharp arrows tries. For Sidney the faded moon, the pale moon reflects his own frustration for Stella or Lady Penelope. This moon becomes a symbol of the solitary lover who is sad because of his unresponsive beloved. Let us move forward to next four lines. See what is in it. We will read it as Sure, if that long with love acquainted eyes can judge of love, thou feelest a lover's case. I read it in thy looks, thy languished grace to me that feel the like thy state describes. Poet feels pretty sure in case of the moon that it can judge the love feelings of Sydney because like Sydney, the moon is also longing for love acquainted eyes or love bearing eyes the moon is also seeking for some kind of response from his beloved now the poet reads the face of the moon and he finds its face as a languished crest Sydney finds the moon's face depicting the faded love experience it shows moon's faded attempts towards his unresponsive beloved for poet the moon's state of sorrowful love experience is similar to that of his own love experience with lady penelope lady penelope becomes the reason for sydney's language to grace and a sydney is longing for as obviously her love acquainted eyes so here we find that the moon and the poet are fellow sufferers let us move on to next sestet that is a six line stanza we will read it as then even of fellowship o moon tell me is constant love deemed there but want of wit are beauties there as proud as here they be do they above love to be loved and yet those lovers scorn whom that love doth possess do they call virtue their ungratefulness see number of questions are being asked by sydney to the moon he asks to the moon is the constant love or true love considered as unwitty or stupid in heaven also are beauties in heaven as proud as here they are on earth this is what sydney asked sydney also have two more questions to the moon do the beloveds suppose themselves above the feeling of love sydney asks see the frustration uh, is very eminent in these lines these beloveds scorn or hate or make fun of the lovers who possess a great feeling of love for them the poet tries to suggest here that all the girls in the world must be appreciating the fact that they are being loved by someone so much then why is it that these ladies don't express their gratefulness towards the lovers who have a great love feeling for them who do possess a great love feeling in their hearts for them why is it that these beloveds are so ungrateful towards them do these ladies consider their ungratefulness a virtue of some kind how sad it is if at all they might be considering thus we can see sydney out of love frustration goes on to ask so many questions to the moon here we observe that moon is also unresponsive just like sydney's beloved lady penelope thus the poem ends on this note where astrophel or the star lover or mr philip sydney 
cannot make his stela lady penelope rich to give any kind of response so that he can get something for his love bearing heart nor the poet can make moon talk something on this issue the moon moon is also the fellow sufferer moon is also going through the same phase of frustration as poet is at least for poet so moving on to the formatic analysis we will have some notable facts here of course the poem is a sonnet it is a 14 line poem more specifically it is a petrarchan sonnet divided into octet and sestet octet is a eight line stanza and sestet is a stanza of six lines the rhyme scheme as we can see here is a b b a a b b a for the first octet and c d c d e e for the sestet there are so many variations found by different poets in the sestet the meter of the poem is iambic pentameter pa pam pa pam as we can identify it as the theme of the poem is love and nature as we can have astrophel is in found deeply love with the stella and so many images are brought here from the nature like the moon the language devices the major language devices we can identify it as personification and pathetic policy personification it is the moon is personified or given human physical qualities the moon is also given emotional attributes of a man and does it become a pathetic policy thank you for your patience listening don't forget to subscribe my channel is english to have glimpses of english language and literature thank you